and welcome to another edition of Ask Caroline, where you get to ask all of the questions and I, as a wedding planner, are going to answer all your questions in future videos or I can put comments down below. So please do pop any questions you might have below. Today, we're going to be talking about how to plan a luxury wedding on a budget. This is going to be your guide to planning your dream wedding. So planning a luxury wedding doesn't have to mean breaking the bank. And in this video, we're going to explore how to create that dream wedding without compromising on style or quality. I'm Caroline, I'm your wedding planning angel and I've over 30 years experience in weddings. And I am the owner of an award-winning exclusive use wedding venue here in the Lake District. So when it does come to luxury on a small scale, I'm perfectly placed to be answering some of these questions. Now I know the words luxury wedding just conjure up images of grandeur, opulence, and along with that, a really hefty price tag. But it doesn't have to be that way. With a little thoughtful planning and a bit of creativity, you can have the wedding of your dreams without breaking the bank. So today we're going to explore eight practical tips and ideas for planning a luxury wedding on a budget, ensuring that your special day is both memorable and affordable. So let's start with the first point. Here we're going to set about defining your priorities and that ugly word, budgeting. So in order to do this, you really have to identify what key elements matter most to you both. So is it gonna be an exquisite venue or a designer bridal gown? You know, establishing your priorities right from the start helps you to allocate your budget more effectively. What matters the most to you? So set a realistic budget that reflects your financial situation and be honest about what you can afford and use this as a foundation for planning your wedding. Have a clear budget in mind and this will guide you with your decisions and prevent you from overspending. Then once you've set your budget, start to research the real actual cost of things. You might then need to, of course, revisit that budget and refine it a little. Point number two, this is gonna be all about choosing the right venue. But before we get into that, can I just say to you, did you know that the wedding planning services can cost you between 15 and 20% of your whole budget? So when you're looking at unique venues that do include the services of an experienced wedding planner, that can really save you a whole bunch of money. According to Hitched, the average cost of a wedding in 2022 was a massive 18,400 pounds. So choosing a venue that includes a wedding planner is a huge saving. So also think about choosing a venue that can cater for your ceremony and your reception all at the same place. This is not only going to save you on time, which I'll get onto in a minute, but it's also going to save you a huge amount on transportation costs. So think about how you're going to transport your guests between venues and the actual cost of that. It isn't as cheap as you think. Um, then let's have a look at timings. So if you have a venue that, for example, could do flexible timings for you, why don't you consider having your wedding either earlier in the day and don't have an evening reception or have a twilight ceremony with a shorter wedding period altogether? So shorter weddings also have the added benefit of having none of those awkward pauses. A lot of venues may well be um, space restricted, so they may need more time so that they can do changeovers so that your room can be converted from your ceremony to your dining area and vice versa. So have a look at venues that have got dedicated spaces for each of those, because actually what that actually means is that the time that you are at the venue is shorter because you don't need as many of those pauses and also it flows much better and the guest experience is much better because your guests are not waiting between ceremony and the next part of the wedding itself. So think about your venue very, very carefully. Another thing that we need to consider when we're looking at venues is whether or not you're going to choose what we class as a blank canvas wedding venue or an all-inclusive wedding venue. On the surface of it, when you're going to be comparing price, which you will be doing, the all-inclusive venue is always, always going to come out looking really expensive. However, I just want you to consider all of the things that you may have to source and hire in or buy in yourselves in order to make your blank canvas wedding venue or your dry hire venue, as they're often called, 
as, as luxurious as the all-inclusive venue that you may also have your eye on. So if you're going to go with a dry hire and it's got a lower price tag, of course, write that down in your budget. But then don't forget to ask the cost of and write down the cost of hiring things like the tables, the chairs, the table linen, the glassware, um, the table decorations, the candles, the fairy lights, the floral decor. All of these things really do add up in cost. Not only that, if you are doing your own wedding planning in order to save a little money, they're also going to add to the list of jobs that you've got to do. You've got to organise the hire or the purchase of all of these things. And not only that, you've got to bring them along to the venue and set them up and also take them down again. So factor all of that in because your time is also costly and also how many people are you going to have hands on deck in order to help you to create that luxury feel that you're looking for. So don't always dismiss the all-inclusive wedding venue because it's going to be too expensive. Do make a careful comparison between the two and do remember to write down all of those little extras that you're going to get included in your all-inclusive and make sure that you price accordingly so that you have got a fair comparison when it's coming to making that budgeting decision. Point number four we're going to talk about is going to be choosing venues that have got some off-peak dates and times that are going to be a little bit more budget friendly. So lots of venues now do offer weddings through their low season. Of course they're going to be rammed during the summer because everybody wants to get married between May and August. So if you don't mind having a winter wedding um, or if you don't mind you know having a late autumn wedding then ask the venue what their off-peak times might be and then maybe think about choosing one of those dates. If you really don't need to be in the children's school holidays, then why push yourself to those particular dates, knowing that you're going to be paying a premium for those slots? So having that same experience in a luxury luxury um, venue isn't going to make any difference what day of the week it might be. So instead of choosing those premium Saturdays in high summer, have a think about, you know, what impact would it have and would it make any difference if it was a Wednesday in October or November? It's a no-brainer, you know, that you're going to save a lot of money doing that. The other thing is that you, if you were to plan well in advance, then you can choose through some of the juiciest dates that those venues may well have. So do think about planning two years in advance. The other benefit to that, of course, is it gives you a little bit more time to save and you can budget. You can, with a lot of venues, you can then also um, arrange with them a payment plan so that it makes it easier for you. You can um, pay off your wedding in either monthly or quarterly instalments. A lot of venues do offer that service. So planning ahead, looking for those off-peak times is going to save you a whole bunch of money. You're still going to have the same luxury feel. You're still going to have the same, you know, desirable venue in the location that you love, but at a fraction of the cost, hopefully. Okay, so our next point, number five, is going to be all about savvy shopping and spending. So we've made our budget. We've decided what our priorities are right at the beginning of this video. Of course, we can get a little ahead of ourselves and we can get tempted by lots of things. So... Instead of blowing your budget on a, on a designer gown or a custom tailored suit, why don't we consider shopping for wedding clothes during the sales or the sample events? Lots of boutiques will offer beautiful dresses and suits at a fraction of the cost during promotional periods. So if you've booked that low season, um, fantastic venue two years in advance, you do have a couple of seasons where you might be able to grab yourself a bargain. Also, modern brides look fabulous in a whole host of options that are not necessarily traditional white wedding gowns. Lots of high-end department stores offer evening gowns from, from your favourite designers and this can offer you a stunning option without the bridal premium. There's also pre-loved wedding gowns. This is a big hit, not just for the purse, but also for sustainability. And after a good old professional dry clean, who would ever know? There are lots of websites out there on the market for pre-loved wedding gowns, so do give it a try. You don't have to be spending £4,000 on a wedding dress when the same dress you may well find at a fraction of the cost. So, still on the theme of savvy shopping, let's look at your actual wedding colour theme. 
I know that lots of you go out there and are just itching to buy lots of things that are going to enhance that experience for your guests with all of your lovely wedding decor and all of the things that you're going to be wanting to buy. If you want to create that looks feel, then maybe using a rich colour palette would be one of the ways to actually give that looks, um, that looks feel. Or you might want to choose along with a classic white or a green that are always in vogue. Um, also, when you're coming to buy things for your table, let's consider doubling up and where we could use dual use items. For example, your favours could double up as place names too. So wherever you can make a saving and not having to purchase two items, if you could do something that's going to have a dual use, it's always going to save, but it will still look absolutely fantastic. A beautiful wedding favour with somebody's um, name elegantly, um, either scribed or printed on a lovely card, would, would you know, combine the two items. So you're not having to buy the wedding stationery and the favour, you've got both in one and they still look beautiful. Okay, also another idea, and we do this quite regularly, is that we would serve your wedding cake as the dessert for your three-course dinner. So if you're having a shorter day wedding, then it's always a good idea where time might be a little bit more sparing, that you don't have uh, your wedding cake sitting on the side there only to be cut and then just looked at or served as your supper. We actually serve the wedding cake then as the third course of that wedding meal. And we do enhance it of course but consider asking your venue if they could serve your wedding cake as the dessert that is going to save you on your third course point number six have you considered digital rather than printed now i know there's a huge debate about this we do like to receive things in the post and for some of our more mature members of the family they would like to keep something as a keepsake and may not always be on digital platforms so again you'll have to make a decision on this however saving on printing and postage costs is a huge saving so opting for digital invitations is one of the ways that you're going to make huge savings but still have that looks feel so there are many online platforms that offer elegant and customizable designs allowing you to style your own invitations without the hefty price tag also, websites are much more sustainable too and are a modern alternative to expensive wedding stationery. There are many companies out there that will help you to build and create your own website from scratch and then you can send the link to your website to your guests and you can put everything in there digitally from the, you know, what's happening, the date, the time, who's invited, what to expect, where the venue is, lots of information about you and your partner and they're a lovely way to connect with your guests before the wedding. So wedding websites and digital invitations are a key area where lots of people are heading and they do save a lot of money when it comes to printed stationery and not only the printing but the postage costs. Now we're going to move on to the guest list and being strategic with your guest list. So number seven, how to keep your guest list manageable by inviting only your closest friends and family. We have seen a huge shift, especially since the global pandemic, and people now actually physically reducing their guest list. And not only that, realizing that they do have options, they have choices, and it has become more popular to have much more smaller, more intimate weddings. And of course, it goes without saying, the fewer the guests, the lower the cost is going to be. So if you are going to consider a much smaller, more intimate guest list, you are going to make savings. Those savings don't necessarily have to be literal savings. It means that you could push the boat out a little bit more for the fewer guests that you do have and then consider more luxury items or more luxury fields. You can go with those nice optional extras that you would love to have. The higher the number of guests you have, the higher the cost it is gonna be. And of course, it does involve usually a lot more stress. So smaller, more intimate weddings are more relaxed and more budget friendly. And without having to compromise on style, leave you more in the budget for those luxury extras. Now I know that lots of people do struggle with bringing their guest list down. They have a lot of pressure. So we did create our one minute guest list quiz. If you are interested in having a look at our one minute guest list quiz, 
I'm going to add a link into the comments below. It will help you to be very clear about who's in and who's out and help you to make some rational decisions about which guests you should be inviting or you need to invite to your wedding. And now we come to our final point, number eight, and this is all about prioritising the experiences over the things. So here we're going to look at how you can allocate more of your budget to the experiences that you and your guests will feel and remember and you can wow your guests with rather than the material items of things that they may well see on the table or in the decor. So invest in a quality venue in an amazing location with outstanding hospitality and catering. This is going to be a treat for your guests to share. Choosing a venue away from home may feel like a risk for some people, but guests do relish the opportunity to take a few days away in a location that they've never experienced before, or it could be in a location that they absolutely love. Destination weddings and the experience they bring are becoming much more popular and are a talking point for your guests for years to come. Couples often used to worry that would people take time out and would they travel to um, go to their weddings? We have a venue in the Lake District. We often used to get asked this question and believe you me, guests absolutely love coming to the Lake District and taking a couple of days out, even if it's midweek and sometimes leaving their children at home and they're gonna have a whole wow experience too. So it does make a huge difference just thinking about the destination for your venue and where it's gonna be located and that whole experience. Guests will really look forward to coming to your wedding, especially if it's in a super location. Also, let's think about your honeymoon. A lot of couples would absolutely love a far away, luxurious honeymoon, but maybe on top of the wedding, sometimes that can get a little bit too difficult with the budget. So why don't you just consider extending your wedding bubble just a few days and have just a, a mini moon to begin with, just for the initial time after your wedding, and then plan a luxury honeymoon further down the line, maybe in a year or two, when you've had time to save up so that that experience is to die for. So by approaching your wedding planning with creativity, flexibility and a realistic budget, you can achieve a luxury wedding, the one you've always dreamed of, without the unnecessary financial burden. Remember, it's the thoughtful details and the personal touches that make a wedding truly special, ensuring that you and your guests feel relaxed and cared for throughout the day. So if you would like to share any of your tips on creating a luxury wedding on a budget, or if you have got a favorite luxury item that you had for your wedding day, please let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, please subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified each time we post a new wedding planning video. My name is Caroline and you can ask Caroline anytime. If you're interested in my venue, it is called Cote Howe Lake District Weddings and we are located in the beautiful hamlet of Rydal in Wordsworth Country in the English Lake District. Take care now. See you soon. Bye bye.